Welcome to my edutainment series where we talk all things about your health, coronavirus, and happy, healthy lifestyle. Today, uh, I have a special guest on, Dr. Stephanie Rimka. Dr. Rimka is a health coach, holistic functional medicine doctor, uh, epi epigenetics coach, neurofeedback therapist, and chiropractor by training. And she's the most recent recipient of Best Best Media's Reader's Choice Award for Best Mental Health Clinic in Atlanta. 2020. She's been in private practice seeing patients specializing in neurologic disorders such as autism, anxiety, ADHD, depression, and memory loss, right? And she's an amazing, beautiful lady. Um, you're going to love her. She is so dialed in when it comes to um, functional medicine and helping you guys live a long and healthy life. So with that, it's my honor and privilege to welcome my very good friend, Dr. Stephanie Ripka. Hi. Man, you are so pretty. What's up with that? I have a good redox potential. Let's say that. Let's start with I'm, I'm highly charged. And we'll let we can talk about that. I never even thought about this. It put, like what you did right there. I like that. Put your, uh, your Dr. Underscore Ripka. Is that yeah. you on social media? On yeah, I just keep it like that. Yeah, that's my Instagram. Oh, nice. And then they can just, it's there. So you're going to, now I just upgraded you, huh? Wow. That's really awesome. You just but I taught you something about social media is wow. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, before we get started, I know we know you're a badass functional medicine doctor, but tell me, I want to get to know you a little bit real quick. When you were 18, what were you like? If we were friends, what would we be doing? Um, was I already in college? So I was graduating senior year in high school. No. Um, I, it was kind of the badass thing. So I had long hair, I had really long hair. Um, I would wear baseball hats backwards. I played a lot of sports. Sports was a thing. I kind of, so I was in the smart kids group and I was in the jock group and I was like senior class president and I was national honor society, but I was always what? in trouble with the nuns. Yeah. I was all of those things. I was, I was an anomaly. I was all the I women are giving you love, man. what all the women are giving you love. She looks like Halle Berry. Uh, I've what? heard that before. And so I was up in Detroit, you know, so I'm from Detroit. So we have uh -huh. a whole different kind of Midwestern Detroit way of being up there. Mm -hmm. That's what I was like. I was a good time. I was a very loyal friend. I was a fighter. I was nice. like a bully fighter for anybody. That yeah. was my thing. And it's still kind of my thing. That's awesome. So where'd yeah. you go to school? Um, up in Michigan, I went to a small private liberal arts school called Albion College. I went to private school my whole life, Catholic school for 13 years. And then I went to a private little tiny school with the best biology department in the state of Michigan called Albion College. Nice. And then I, uh, that was my undergrad. And then I um, was making a decision. I was debating between orthopedic surgery or pediatric psychiatry. But I also really was drawn into feeling I didn't want to go into traditional medicine um, mm -hmm. because of some, I broke my back in college. Okay. Oh, so how'd you do that? Soccer game. Oh, wow. And uh, the traditional medical establishment didn't have anything for me. Mm -hmm. And pain meds um, were just jacking me up. And it was more like, you're never going to play sports again. You're never going to run again. And I basically said, get me the F out of this bed and take me to my chiropractor because I'd been getting sure. adjusted for a very long time. And kind of some of that journey of that, and I had a thyroid crash disorder that they didn't diagnose. So I came, became really frustrated in undergrad, like 20 yeah. years old with medicine, and I wanted to be in medicine. So I was really confused. So I kind of went on a spiritual journey, um, a lot of self-reflection, and it's been kind of a self-help obsession since then. Uh, and it led me down a different path and it made me make a different choice. And so I went to like more of the vitalistic natural school and I came down to Atlanta to go to Life University for my doctorate. Um, so I've just been studying health for mm -hmm. a very long time and looking at the body like a human systems, human design. Yeah. I didn't study drugs and surgery like you did, right? So we have very different backgrounds. Um, and that's- we that's, why this is gonna be a great interview. that's why this is gonna be a great interview. Yeah. yeah, we come together differently. Yeah, you know, when I first met you, we had the same haircut. So I was kind of worried today that we- would, I know, I've, <laughs> I can't get my hair down, boo-boo. So this is where we're at right now. This, this is my coronavirus hair. I, I keep a haircut like him. We should 
I'll drop in a comment of me with one of my mohawks. <laughs> I, the kids I, call me Dr. I, mohawk. I get cards, Dr. Mohawk. I love it. Now I'm like looking plain, but I'm, I'm gonna see how high I can get this mohawk to go during coronavirus. I think you should do some unicorn rainbow colors. Ew, no, 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 no. Why not? I'll do it if you do it. <laughs> Peer pressure. Peer pressure. <laughs> so um, let's talk about staying healthy. I mean, you're getting a lot of comments here, beautiful lady, and they want to know your beauty secrets, all sorts of stuff. But let's talk about overall wellness. What's the number one thing somebody can do to stay, to feel well? Well, if we take that to a really simple level to it where all of them out there well a lay person who has no idea what anything means if i had to pinpoint it to one thing i would say prioritize and manage good sleep mm, you know i'm i'm kind of up there with you man sleep is so important and we completely undervalue it so we what is completely undervalue like yeah. we we not only undervalue it we actually insult and bastardize it yeah yeah. yeah, but well, do you believe that everybody needs eight hours of sleep? Because I, I don't believe that. But you know. uh, actually, yeah, kind of I do. Most of the numbers um, I, for me, I have like stats. A minimum of a six. I know I talk with my hand. <laughs> um, I kind of have uh, ways of helping patients understand if we don't have six hours of sleep in that night. Six hours is my bare minimum because the studies absolutely are clear. People. Yeah. What humans do is we basically attenuate to low performance. So if you consistently get lack of sleep over time, you're going to end up self-reporting that you're just, I do great on four hours of sleep. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like a rock star. Yeah. And if we actually tested them with cognitive performance testing and agility, reaction testing, speed testing, That's they true. don't perform well. They're a, they're a total shit show. Yeah. And once we start getting them sleeping again, their performance completely changes. So we are really brilliant creatures that we attenuate all over the place to make what's happening around us not seem so bad. Right. That's what we do. So I, I, a minimum six hours. But most people are going to need in that eight to nine hour sleep. Eight's a nice number. Six to eight is a definite range that I, I shoot for. And I, I like don't, that. I don't think the number is important as the quality of sleep. I think it should yeah, be. Yeah, but you have a normal cycle. You have your phase yeah. you have to go through. You have to have this much time in REM, this much time mm -hmm. in deep. And if you don't, if you're only doing this much time, you are not getting enough time in any of those phases. It adds right. up and you aren't mm -hmm. getting your normal, uh, you know, spikes in growth hormone and stuff. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And is it true that poor sleep will affect your immune system since we're talking about coronavirus and things? It devastates the immune system. How it so? devastates it. Um, it. You know, there's a whole cascade of things that are going to happen uh, with lack of sleep. I mean, one, we also, we do know about what growth hormone is going to do and how that's going to heal and repair. With what's happening with insulin and leptin, these hormones, which you know tons and tons about um, from what- yeah, what you've had to do. So dealing with people who become obese and extremely over fat, it's all barely coming down to leptin resistance. Well, leptin is a hormone that is orchestrating everything in your immune system. It right. is the conductor. And most people don't think of a hormone that is related to obesity as the thing that's coordinating your natural killer cells and macrophages and but that is what's going on. And as your sleep gets dysregulated, you dysregulate all of those signals. And it's it's just chaos. You know, the body is designed to be a symphony and it's it can't do it without sleep. So if I have to just say the number one thing that I think people are missing out on typically, I can't address PTSD, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, autism, anxiety, dyslexia, ADHD, if wow. or also have colitis, if I don't have a foundation of good sleep in that patient, that's our, wow. that's our first thing. So let me uh, recap that again. You believe that ADHD, all of those anxiety, ADHD, um, PTSD, depression, a lot of that's even like colitis. Oh yeah. Is really good sleep. I, I think it's, it's foundational. Mm. I can't, so this is what it is. It's like, building a house. If you've built that house that you're living in, let's say, you know, I used to flip some houses. So, you know, I understand ripping it down and what you got to do. Uh -huh. If that foundation of a house 
right, isn't okay, the entire, I, I, if I'm designing, if I'm the architect of this, and I'm, I'm the architect of helping people design the house of, the, of their body, of their health system, mm-hmm. going up to the third floor bathroom mirror and picking out the mirror or the paint color in the third story bathroom, to me, is a, when we haven't built a foundation, is akin to saying, well, what do you think about vitamin, you know, K, D3 and K2? Should I take that for this? Where I'm like, mama, you're a hundred pounds overweight and a type two diabetic with hypertension and cardiovascular disease. That is like talking about the paint color on the third floor bathroom. And it is irrelevant at this moment when we have a foundation that's completely crumbling. I have to fix the foundation or the whole house is going to crash and collapse. But you're concerned about what color to paint the bathroom? Mm. It's the wrong question. Right. So I think people are asking the wrong questions because they've been conditioned this way by the medical model that's so used to just, well, throw some paint on it, throw a Band-Aid on it, throw some tape over it, just cover Mm -hmm. it up because we don't know how to fix the foundation. And that sounds really hard anyway, so screw it. So what are a couple of things people can do to, to improve their sleep? Oh, lots of things. So first, and this is an odd one, seeing the sunlight in the morning. Mm. How you set up your day, right, with the SCN, with how sunlight hits your eye, that is establishing your circadian rhythm, your clock. You have clocks in your body. Actually, every cell has a body, but this up here in your eye runs faster than everything else. And there's a timing system between what the eye and the brain and all the cells do. And it is driven by morning sunlight signaling that it is time to be awake. You actually make ocular melatonin with sunlight coming in against an unopposed eye, no glasses, no contact. Uh, and, And in particular, it's that first 90 minutes after sunrise. That light is very special. There's very low UV happening. The infrared A rays are really powerful. That sunlight coming, you're making melatonin in your eye. You're making dopamine as well, which makes you feel good and make good decisions. So step one, get yourself on a normal sleep cycle by allowing sunlight to signal into your brain the natural rhythm that the earth has built in to keep you strong, that it's daytime. And that, so that, that light blocking blinds and stuff is bad for you. Say that, say that again. Light blocking blinds, like the dark blinds, those are bad. At for night, you. At, at night, it's beautiful. I hope My you, bedroom you is know. pitch black at night. So, so in the morning, the sunlight hits you in the eye if it's pitch black. No, no, in the morning. Mm-hmm. So in the, I go outside. No, no, it can't come through a glass. So let me be clear. It has to be unblocked. I said no glass. No, no, nothing. It's like, I have a window right here. That doesn't count. It gets refracted. I need it to come into my eye. So I open my front door before Mm -hmm. I I wake up in the morning. I might pee first, but I don't look at lights. I don't look at screens. I don't look at anything. I walk to the front of my house where the sun is rising and I go and I step outside, even in the rain. And I look at the sun every morning short of me there being some crisis that I can't. It's 90% of the time. This is what I've been doing for years. So step one, how do you do it? You have to tell your brain when it's the morning, you let the sunlight make melatonin for you. You later in the day, your pineal gland releases a little bit, but later, the more melatonin you have, flow, your body makes melatonin all over the place. It's not just the okay. pineal gland. Um, and then your body can convert that and help it help you go to sleep. But what helps your body trigger then later that melatonin to be activated and converted is darkness. Darkness is the signal to sleep. So the second step would be to look at your light at night. In an ideal world, you're not looking at things after the sun goes down. All right. Mm -hmm. That's your ideal world. Now, you know, you've probably seen some of my videos. These are my at night. If so, and in here like this, right? These are some of my blue light blocking glasses. These are my daytime glasses. So I'm using using natural lights coming in at me. So I don't have to, you know, I use, I use UV lights. These lights that you see on me are so much better than anything I could say. Hi. (laughs) Sorry, everybody. (laughs) Ladybug. It's a, yeah, comic character called Ladybug. (laughs) Oh, you want to grab her, Erica? Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you wear actual blue 
light blocking glass. Yeah, and so my nighttime ones aren't, aren't handy because this is my daytime. This is what I've been using uh, when I've been on the computer. It's raining today. I, you know, I work outside 90% of the time, so I have natural sunlight. So when mm -hmm. I'm inside, uh, I control my lights and I don't, I use artificial lights that mimic the sun actually. So I have infrared A and UVA, UVA and B lights on me when I'm inside my house. So I do a lot of special things to mimic the sun. So mm. all that is because of what it does to melatonin and what it does to insulin and what it does to leptin, because this light not only will dysregulate your sleep, it also dysregulates insulin, which is why part of why we're all getting fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter. Not um, you. Because <laughs> I regulate my sun. I'm at my light. Ah. You know what I do. I don't work out at all. No, I, don't I do zero. I don't either. And it shows. <laughs> yeah. I know it's like, I know what to do. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, I, I'm a fan of it. It's because I was injured and broke my back and I've, I've blown discs and I sometimes uh -huh. go through issues that I'm like, Ooh, that that's tough. And I'm sometimes scared of, I've been in traction more than once with unable to move my legs and not being able to walk is scary. Yes. So I have some fear about doing some things, but I ran a 5k a few years ago. I mean, it, and it didn't take much. I don't have to do much because I use, devices and science and natural things that basically fake exercise on my body. Okay. So I'm into well, using other things. Well, so sleep, okay. sleep, morning sunlight, and then turning off devices and screens and stuff at night. If, hmm. if you're going to use them, use blue light blocking glasses. I, I agree with you there. I find that um, a lot of the patients who sit there and say they have trouble falling asleep at night, it's because of their bedroom habits. And I don't like good bedroom habits. Yeah. I mean, watching too much. TV. I can't sleep. I have insomnia. No, you have a Netflix addiction, boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and the reason it is really an addiction, you know, and then they you can't, when I look at this, you're getting, you know, this extreme blue light as if if it's at like noon from the sun. So your brain says it's noon. Then it takes it hours to unleash the melatonin cascade to fall asleep because you ruined it with artificial light. That's what I'm talking. That's that's critical. I so think if you're going around the word blue light and they don't really explain it. So what what, what do you mean when you say blue light? What, why? Do okay. We so remember, remember Roy G. Biv? Mm hmm. In That's the visible the light spectrum. Yeah. So, so humans only see so much light. So we have an electromagnetic field that's like, right. here, where am I? It's this big. The visible light spectrum is like this big. Right. So yeah. we only see this much light. Other things see a lot more light. So some things see infrared and we don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh -huh. We only see visible light the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of those colors is blue, right? Sunlight in the middle of the day has like all these colors in it. And, and the antidote of, it's not like blue light is bad because when it's in its natural form, it has a balancer. Mm -hmm. it, it has purples and reds in it to balance it out. But a screen, now that we've gone to these high tech LED screens, They've magnified every with every kind of technological and ad advancement of our light bulbs. You know, you and I, I'm 47 and you're probably in my age range or something. Yeah. We grew up with incandescent bulbs and giant LED, giant TV screens, cathode screens, right? <laughs> your children are growing up with a completely different type of lights in your house and a completely different type of screen technology. This right. is four times the amount of blue light only specific without any other uh, wavelength balancing. So it looks like new, like it's pure bright sunlight to your brain. Mm. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense, yeah. Okay. So other than uh, so, number one would be really get the improve the quality and 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 your sleep. What would be yeah. another tip for boosting your wellness? Um, oh, there's a few things we could get into. So I'm very into this is what I want to say first, and I won't get into too much science. People want to think of themselves. They've been taught that they're basically a bag of chemicals. Mm -hmm. This this Western medicine story of the last hundred years only is that you are chemistry Chemical and we bad. can we can fix or uh, combat anything with chemicals. Mm -hmm. And those would be 
pills and creams and shots and whatever, right? So they're drugs, right? Those are chemicals. So the, the story has been, you're a bag of chemicals and some water. And if we just get the chemistry right, everything's going to be right. What is the, that is deeply missing is it's completely flawed because the foundation of who you actually are, I'm just, I'm going to say on a physical level, we won't talk esoteric or spiritual. You yeah. are electrical first. You are, you are electricity primarily. So you're, yeah. and then electricity runs through something it create at a 90 degree perpendicular. It always gives off a magnetic pulse. You are electromagnetic in resonance primarily and is that that creates all the chemicals the chemicals are messengers made from the electricity huh. so the quality of how much charge charge the word what's your you know are you at 30 percent are you at a hundred percent where are you in your charge and sleep is one of those primary places where you always should be recharging okay I, that's how you do it you're making me look bad. You're sounding too smart. So let me. <laughs> <laughs> let me reset some hey man, talk about drugs. I won't have know what the hell know. you're talking let, about. Let me reset some people because some people be like, "That sounds woo woo." That sounds like no. Well, we can't tell be about like, EKGs. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that's exactly what EKG is. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, so for those of you guys who aren't listening to Dr. Rimko or think she's a snowflake or whatever, that's how you. When, you, when your doctors hook you up to these monitors, they're measuring your electrical pulse. And we, we think of it as just like your heart, but no, your whole body is. Every time you do muscles, I mean, how do you contract a muscle? It has to send an electrical it's electronic. Pulse. It's electrical firing. Yeah. And anybody who's watching who's into bodybuilding or weightlifting or anything like that, they've heard of a TENS unit where they just, they squeeze, they can pulse. I'll, be, I'll get it here. Contract your muscle. So yeah, you are electromagnetic pulse. That's awesome. Keep going. How, how do we declare someone officially dead in a hospital? Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, no yeah, hard stuff. Yeah. Like, what is it? You know, flat line. Yeah, it's there. It, it's there. It's there's no more charge. Mm -hmm. We are measuring. So I do neurofeedback for a living. I measure electrical activity of brain waves and look at that, how it comes into brain imaging. So I'm looking at EEG recordings all the time from all over the scalp. Wh what's the electrical activity? What's the signature? I'm gathering you, you electrically looking, are you a low powered individual? Are you a neutral individual? Are you a high powered? Is it chaotic? Does, is it synergized? Electricity has become kind of everything in my life. I did not go to school to study electrical engineering. I never, I didn't know AC current from DC current when I started doing this. But as you start having to look, I'm like, you're looking at patients, you're looking at what you're doing. You're like, what the hell am I actually doing? And you start studying it and you start studying it. And you go deeper then you got to, you have to learn about electrons. You have to learn about protons because how does the body work? How do those little things called mitochondria do? They run electrons through and slip protons out to make electrical charge and a pro and, and a magnetic spin. That's what? Exactly. That's what's actually really going on, but people don't know that. Yep. So, I can have be so much more powerful in impacting my patient's health by addressing their electromagnetic charge and the foundation of who they really are and how does charge move through stuff. Can people know they're electrical? Because otherwise they'd say, go get in the bathtub and throw a hairdryer in with you. And they go, well, that's stupid. I go, right. Because you know really quickly that you can be electrocuted and you can die. Mm -hmm. And we measure the brain and they say, once that brain is dead, then we consider that death. You know? Yeah, it, it's been a while since I've had cellular physiology, but as I recall, basically what happens when you're talking about chemical signaling, there's a channel across your membrane and you have ions built on the outside, the switch turns and ions go on the inside and it's the potential gradient between the outside and the inside that causes that charge, which causes that electrical signal, basically. Yeah, it's all about charge. It's all about protons and electrons, positive and negative. That's all what it is. And we have so much electrical potential just within a cell membrane. It, it's mind blowing. What I like to be able to do is empower people to let them know you have such a reservoir of power and magnitude within you that if we could, you could just unleash it and untap it and you learned how to access it, you would have such strong resilience and you would fear nothing. Mm -hmm. But it's not they don't know that. They it's aren't told that. Good. You know, it's electrifying, electrifying. Yeah, so that's my next step would be, I want them to know 
we should be building charge. Okay, we how do we do that? Your electrical charge. Well, sunlight is a huge thing for it. So mm -hmm. sunlight is very powerful, giving you flooding with electrons. That's a huge way of doing it. Um, then can you I, can get. Can I guess another way? Can I guess another way? Yeah. Okay, how about walking on your Earth barefoot? Perfect. Yep. Really? Because the largest magnet you're ever going to come in contact with probably <laughs> is the Earth. Yeah. Okay. It get it gives off an electromagnetic pulse. It's called the Schumann resonance. We know, understand there's a, a pulse between the earth and the, all the lightning in the ionosphere. And there's this, these frequencies in between that get us healthy. Mm -hmm. There's a whole form of neurofeedback therapy called alpha theta or deep states training. And it's all about in training people's brains into 7.83 Hertz, which is exactly in line with the earth. And so when you've been doing, I did this on patients. It's a deep hypnagogic state. It helps deal with alcoholism. PTSD, trauma. It's a powerful peak performer. All my Navy SEALs and, and Rangers in my office always did it for, for hours. These guys are like almost addicted to it because it's a powerful, it's like a superhuman state to go take your brain to. Mm -hmm. Well, when I realized, I'm like, what are we really doing? What is this magical hurts? And it's the same as the earth. That's kind of mm -hmm. why I had to start studying all this weird electrical stuff mm -hmm. and how it made sense. Our bodies are just just a small microcosm of the macrocosm of the planet, which is really just another resonance of the entire, you know, cosmos of the galaxy. We're in the planet, everything kind of moves the same way. Our our DNA is a helix for a reason. You know, mm -hmm. things are things are made in the in the structure and the shape for a reason. So I like them to know I like to teach first of all you're electrical. So stop thinking throwing a bunch of chemicals on everything is going to solve the problem. Because eventually like if you're at a car and the battery keeps dying, we could jump start it, but mm -hmm. sometimes there comes a point you can't recharge it. You got to get a new one. That's probably aging and death, right? Mm -hmm. So I say keep your batteries charged. So that's a great way. Let's talk about food. So food, okay. everybody wants to know, food does it too. So you want a lot of electron. Okay. Can we go back up? Remember mitochondria? We talked yeah. about you know, a little, you know, right? Little powerhouse of the cell that people talk about. They don't eat. There's really no fat isn't fuel. Carbohydrates aren't fuel. Protein's not fuel. The fuel is electrons. Mm. That's the only thing that runs through the inner membrane of a mitochondria, it's called the electron transport chain. That's it. Some foods carry more electrons than others. So if you have more electrons, you're going to make more ATP. You're going to have more quantum entangled gas signals, redox signals. You're going to have better symphony if you have more electrons running through. So that's electricity. Mm -hmm. Fat delivers a lot of electrons. Mm. Okay. Animal fat delivers a lot of electrons to, to that mitochondria. So staying healthy, this is where we can talk. So that was fancy way of saying, I think people should have really healthy leptin levels. Very healthy. Uh-huh. Are you, you saying know, eat, eat animal fat? Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's in a steak, right? Mm-hmm. Animal fat. I, I, I'm a fan of animal meats. Primal food. Yeah. Primal food. Interesting. Yeah. Because it increases your redox charge. It makes you have a stronger electrical uh, charge. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah. What about alkalinized water? Not a fan. Mm. Because your stomach acid is supposed to be extremely low, 2.5 to 3. So drinking water. So water on the earth is in that natural kind of neutral state. You know, it, yes. it, so I'm I'm into I don't want a machine that's going to artificially do that. Spring water, so water to me should be clean and structured, which means it's it's um, water that's so imagine the water that's come down from a glacier, you know, and the stream. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like the best. If it's super cold, it's moving when like it. Coors does, beer. Pardon? Coors beer. <laughs> oh, that is disgusting. That's the, if you're gonna drink beer, it needs to be like a Guinness. Let's not talk about that's some pansy beer. I'm thinking about the water coming down the Rocky Mountain. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I don't know, watch. I don't own a TV. So I don't really know what those commercials. Are. But if it comes down, it's moving. It's yeah. in. A, they're in vortex. It's picking up minerals. Yep. That's, that's giving it electrolytes, which electricity runs through. You need salt and minerals, right? Salt. Mm -hmm. That's how you get charge. It's moving in a vortex. And I said, it's like DNA runs like this. 
That's mm -hmm. why everything should be running in a vortex. It, it structures it. And it's also something called deuterium depleted, which is a um, mm -hmm. isotope of hydrogen. I don't know if we're gonna get into that. So I'm into that. Are you into that at all? No. Deuterium water? Okay, so it doesn't matter. So anyway, that water is gonna be about seven, seven and a half, maybe eight, you know, pretty neutral. Neutral water. Cool. So I, that's what, that's what I like. It'll have no poisons in it. I want no poisons and I want it structured. And you can do that at home with clean water. Say you had reverse osmosis and it's clean. You can put it in a glass and you can take it with a fork and you can vortex it with a pinch of salt. You've just structured it. So that's okay. what I'm a fan of. So number one is uh, sleep. Number uh, two is you are uh, electrical. And then what would be your number three? Well, I want to get to I want leptin. Leptin. I want a. I want a low carb, low leptin diet because you can alter your immune system in 24 hours by dropping your leptin. Leptin responds significantly faster than insulin. So people now at home on quarantine, shoving their faces full of baked goods and yeah. alcohol, deeply, deeply concerns me. Whoa, whoa, slow down about the alcohol now. Watch out! Watch out! Hey man, there's there's low carb zero sugar alcohol out there too. I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So Can explain you know, to people real quick. Uh, so leptin is a hormone. So there's a few hormones that all work in this beautiful um, synergy to help control metabolism. Hormones, to me, almost. <laughs> I'm gonna get woo woo, but they're like kind of the first chemical compound that have some consciousness to them in the body, um, and they they really signal us stuff. So let's. So leptin is. Um, primarily made by fat cells. So you got these fat cells all over and they release leptin out into the body. Um, people are familiar with insulin because they think, well, I eat something with a lot of sugar. Blood sugar comes up, the, the body releases some insulin to say, oh, let me grab you and help you get into a cell. Like nothing can really get into a cell, you guys, without somebody taking it along and holding its hand. And we have, they're called cofactors and all kinds of, that's why you need all these little things. So anyway, insulin says, come on sugar, let's get into the cell. And we're all kind of familiar with that. Well, the same thing happens, you know, with leptin and these, these two work together in signals. Well, when you eat a bunch of carbs over and over again, repeatedly, the leptin signal goes up and eventually your brain sees high leptin and it thinks um, that it's low leptin, right? Did I explain that? Cause it's kind of, it's, it's, it's leptin resistance is the problem. Okay. So I want, so, Leptin is a signal to tell you if you should store fat and it signals with ghrelin. Do, do, do you tell them these kind of details? Not, not quite this. Okay. Detail. I was going to say, like, I'm trying to like, so good. it's help. It's controlling if you store body fat. Let's okay. say that. So your body fat is telling your brain how much body fat you have. And that controls how much body fat you should store or use. So if your body, if your body thinks, well, they have way too much fat because I'm, the, the leptin signal is telling me, holy crap, look how much fat they've stored. Mm -hmm. It changes your metabolism to try and get rid of the fat. It wants to access the fat and get rid of it. If it thinks the signal says there's really low body fat, oh my God, we've got no body fat. This is really dangerous. We need to get food. This is how it can cha changes your hunger signals to make you hungry or to not make you hungry based mm -hmm. on it trying to save your life. So if you're in a famine and there's nothing to eat, you don't actually, you know, it's, it's trying to work with you to save you. Right. So if you get to the point where your leptin is so high from eating all these carbs, you get these spikes in leptin all the time, your brain eventually starts to ignore it. It's like, a, it's like your daughter that came in. If she's screaming at you all the time, you eventually start to drown it out. You're like, I don't know, whatever. And you ignore it. It's like, I, I'm done hearing that. And that's what the brain does. And it eventually sees the signal as, well, we don't have enough and it makes you really hungry and it makes you store more fat. Yeah. So when your leptin levels get high, that's what goes on. So you want a low insulin and a low leptin and a high adiponectin. If you run those labs and that's what you have, you're going to be a lean person with a really strong immune system mm -hmm. because leptin is again, coordinating that innate immune system. Mm -hmm. Leptin is doing it. So if you have really high leptin, you have disorganization. So these deaths we're seeing, right? 
the comorbidities involved in virtually all of them is extremely high. And, and in the small percentage that I'm seeing from the data from all over the world that I'm seeing when they say, okay, we've seen 2% of the deaths that have no comorbidities, mm-hmm. say out of Italy, the last number I saw. I want to question though, I don't see anywhere on that list where you tested for leptin resistance. I don't see I don't see that they're looking at that because they don't seem to understand how leptin controls the immune system and they don't classify leptin resistance as pathology mm-hmm. the way a functional person does. We come in and look at numbers long before you get to a disease state. We say, look, pumpkin, this is not going well for you. And so if we don't change it now, I'm not going to wait to put you on metformin. I'm not to need the glucophage, which you're already diabetic. Does that make, does that make sense? Totally makes sense. I, I want to get to the definition of functional medicine doctor real quick, but, but um, before that, you know, uh, echoing what you're saying is that we, we know that morbid obesity is a huge risk factor for coronavirus outcomes yeah. and uh, so, something like 70 to 80% of people in the ICUs who are intubated are morbidly obese. Yeah. So that definitely with morbid obesity carries all the other comorbidities that makes puts you at risk for uh, coronavirus outcomes. Yeah. And um, that's actually why I started doing this podcast and why I started talking about coronavirus and everyone was like, you're a weight loss surgeon. Why are you talking about coronavirus? And I said, yeah. because my following, my peeps are in trouble. Yeah. They're in danger. It's that scene from ghost. You in danger, girl. Molly, you in danger, girl. <laughs> One of my favorite lines. So, <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. That was my Whoopi Goldberg. I love it. So can you explain to us really quickly, what's a functional medicine doctor and how are you, how are you different than traditional doctors? Sure. First of all, I will say, I think that's absolutely the perfect reason why you should be talking about it. I'm not an infectious disease expert. I study health systems. I've been studying normal human physiology and optimization for 25 years. You've been studying a very specific niche as well in the healthcare arena. And I said it when this first happened like six weeks ago, I said, I think you're probably going to find your biggest factor is going to be related to leptin resistance, obesity. And that's mm-hmm. going to be also tied into low nitric oxide levels and low D3 levels, because it's all the same pathology at play. The same behaviors lead to all of those pathologies and dysfunctions. It's why cardiovascular disease is number one killer in America. It's why cancer is the number two killer in America. It, it all goes together. And I thought it was bad dates. No, it's not black dates. No, no. Okay. that's that's the Tinder thing. That's a whole other. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other thing, right? So okay. I think it's beautiful that you're doing it, right? And even though we may have different ways of approaching it, it is what what is there. And this is a it is a unique the 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 viral trajectory that has some unique hiccups and interesting, like wow, this is interesting, and it does it's doing this and it's doing this, but it's certainly hitting different countries a little bit differently. And part of it is because here in America, 45% of the population over 45 Mm. is obese. So that's, you talk about, I mean, we're, you're vulnerable. You're in a vulnerable position because you've been giving bad information and bad data and bad lifestyle information. So you're, you are vulnerable because you got people walking around. I can't even tell you many people say all the time, but, but you know, I'm healthy. And I'm like, have you looked in the mirror lately? And, and you know, like, have you done a lab? And they'll say, they'll have they have like three organs removed. Well, yeah, I don't have a gallbladder, and oh yeah, but I don't have this. And they're on two meds, but I feel great. Oh, okay. Thank you know, we do some blood panels, and it's a problem. So I think it's awesome mm-hmm. you're doing it. And I think leptin resistance. It's 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 really leptin resistance. It's a mm-hmm. leptin problem that is there before we have any over fat problems, which leads to obesity, which leads to hypertension and cardiovascular disease and everything like that. Energy health is really an energy game. So what makes a functional, okay, let me say this. I'm beyond a functional medicine doctor. So functional medicine kind of looks at, there's many different schools of of thought in in functional medicine, right? Many different ways to do it. And, And some focus on this, focus on that. You're still kind of using supplements as a drug a lot of times. So mm-hmm. there's still a thinking of, oh man, cheese makes the whole thing better. <laughs> there's kind of still the thinking of treating things with something. 
but supplements and other things like that with therapies are way safer and more effective and some will be getting to root cause then you have a so a functional person is trying to get to a root cause and we may disagree on what that root cause is or whatever but so what you're trying to not mask symptoms you do, symptom suppression is not my goal that is the goal of all pharmaceutical medicine it is symptom suppression right it's not correction we just go yeah. well and, and medicine doesn't doesn't fix high blood pressure and diabetes medicine doesn't cure diabetes no it is a management of system of, of symptoms to help a person have a, a, a safety and be in a kind of a safe zone of not extreme crisis but it's not going through and getting rid of it mm -hmm. you know and I'm glad we have you know these things if I get and I say it all the time like I surgeons are critical to healthcare, you know, and I'm glad they exist. And if I need something repaired, please repair it, right? Um, but that should be the very last resort in more of a trauma situation, you mm -hmm. know? So we look at it from that point. We, we, we look and say, the body is genius. It is not deranged. It is not, you know, just some engine parts put together. It is bigger than the sum of its parts. And it is always trying to do the right thing thing it is intelligent by design so if if i was that liver and i was doing that what am i trying to do what is that signal trying to say how can we enhance that and we look deeper in systems and go well how can we how can we use a supplement or a medication even to jump start a system to get it flowing on its own and get the motor going so then we can back off and say good we, we like pushing a car back in the day you're like come on and we feel it, you know and then it'll the engine will kick on or whatever it used to be back in the 70s yeah i i have a big i have a big problem with uh western medicine along the lines of what you're saying because at some point we adopted this what's called reductionist theory that means like if we take a hole and we look we cut it down 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 reduction reduce it then we can find the cause and fix it and treat it and somewhere along the lines we got lost there yeah we started this interview you can't see the hole anymore you lose the hole you, yep. you and it's very integrated and you really have to be able to see the whole person you know people are not a stack of labs they are yeah. not numbers on a paper. Hold they on. Are, They're not a seven minute visit either. <laughs> I, got you. I, you guys. I, I have never taken insurance in my 20 years in practice. I came out of school and said I'm cash practice. Yeah. And that is the problem with what most physicians have their hands, you know, you're handcuffed because you are a prisoner to the insurance company and the dictation of like what you have to do. I know docs, a lot of my friends are physician friends. They're like, oh, I'm allowed seven minutes a visit or I'll lose my my malpractice. I mean, you can't, you know, and then you're owned by a hospital group. It's it's something like, doc, like I think the number is only like 12% of physicians somewhere in there, maybe it's 15 in America are in private practice anymore. Yeah, no. It, they're it, bought out by all the groups. You know what I mean? And they're completely dictated. Well, my visits are one to three hours. That's wow. how long I spend with my patients. Dang, you must charge a right. lot. I do. <laughs> okay, so what but I want to do is right that's how you get to the root of the problem. So yeah. if I can see you five times, 10 times, and I solve a 15 year problem, well, it was damn worth the money because I can really get to the heart of what's going on that nobody can do. In, yeah. seven, in seven minutes, I could only write a benzo prescription. What else can you do? Here's an opioid, here's a benzo, see it in three months. What else can you do in seven minutes? You said you don't even know medicine, but hey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a rapid fire Q and A. Oh boy. Kind of like, give me your short, quick answers. Okay. okay. And see where it goes. And then I'm gonna tell the viewers right now, they're, they're really loving this. So get your questions ready for Dr. Rimka because we're gonna throw up your questions in, in a second. So rapid fire. Let's do a little bit of coronavirus stuff. Okay. I ask all my guests this. So coronavirus, do you think it came from a Chinese lab? <laughs> I wasn't very rapid fire. More, more likely the North Carolina lab. More, okay. All right. Do, I, I guess, don't know though, I don't know, but. Do you think coronavirus was a bioterrorism warfare? No, it would have been stronger. I think it had a bigger reason. This is not, it, it could have been a whole lot stronger. You know that, right? I mean, this. It shut down the global economy. 
Well, but that doesn't mean it's it's not that it's not as deadly. If it was designed to just really wipe people out, mm-hmm. you could. I mean, if, if I hired some scientists and I said, "Give me a, a biological weapon," and they came up yeah. with this, I would have said, "You're fired," mm-hmm. because you, you know what I mean. We got a whole lot stronger shit floating around mm-hmm. that they could have, you know, done. So, do I think that there's um, some nefarious things going on and there's some miscommunication of data? I do. Oh, you froze up on me. Am I back? Am I back? You froze up now. Oh boy. All right, there we go. Are we We're back? back. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what you heard. I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do the next one. Um, coronavirus will come back again in the fall. True or false? What do you think? Well, if it's it's a virus that's in the environment, they 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 cycle in and out based on UV you know, killing the temperature and the UV rays that do it. So will it, yeah. I mean, the flu come, we, we, all, we get flus and coronaviruses all the time, correct? I mean, so I don't think we're, we're, we, we have yet to really eradicate any of that. So will it come back? Sure. Okay. And we'll all we'll have immunity to it. So it won't be right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True or false or agree or disagree. Do you think people can live to 200 years old? Uh, I think we have the potential to get to 120 to 150 pretty soon. I agree with that. I think the person who's going to live to 150 is already alive right now. Yeah. I'm, well, I think as a standard way of being, I'm actually writing a book right now. I'm being co-authored called it's about longevity with all longevity experts. So uh, it's, we're, it's in a lot of discussion. And so the genetic uh, unlocking of what we have available to us right now is quite astonishing. Mm. How about reversing aging? Is that possible? Age rejuvenation? Yeah, it's getting there for sure. Yeah. How far away away from that? It, it it within 10 years i think we might be stunned at what we're seeing okay can you trust the world health organization so i, I do not <laughs> i have and, not in 20 years though i don't okay. trust the i don't trust the the who the cdc the fda or anything on the news that was my next question do you trust the fda so, no <laughs> no. <laughs> so what does fda approved mean to you nothing why not? I think it's a corrupt, bought and paid for agency at this time. Unfortunately, I don't. Wow. You know, I think, don't miss any words there, doctor. No, I'm not going to. I think people need to stop being lied, manipulated and, and sold like chattel at this point. I can't quite frankly stand them. And because things have been released that shouldn't have been released. Things get approved that should never be approved. Things that should be approved or not. They just stole peptides. They just blocked down the sale of peptides. Peptide therapy is one of the safest and most powerful therapies out there in functional medicine. And they just stole them from us over just last week. Wow. You tell me there's not some bullshit going on right now. When we say, let's take away peptides from people, which are just small signals of hormones that people are unlocking their own natural potential so we can shove a vaccine down their face. Are you shitting me right now? Mm-hmm. If you don't know they're corrupt by now, I don't know what to, how, how to help you with that, but just look at some history. No, I don't trust them. Our okay. government buying people, everything's just money, shifting money. It's just so it's, you know, research now self funded by corporations. It used to be very different. The NIH, what the scientists were allowed to do and how they got funding. It was some impartial stuff and they got to explore and study things. Um, Candace Pert's autobiography, Molecules, Molecules of Emotion really illuminated me. And that was like 25 years ago, you know, she discovered neurotransmitters and her book talking about being a female scientist in the NIH and what was going on and how corrupt it was starting to be starting to suddenly it changed from when she started from when she ended her career. It completely changed and she couldn't believe it was she was so disillusioned to look at they're no longer going after the truth. This is simply about money. There was a big shift in medicine and research. So, no, I don't trust them. How what about vaccines? Um, I'm a strong advocate of medical freedom. I think people should have every choice. What uh, Nobody should be telling me what I should put in my body, nor should I be telling you what you put in your body. I am The theory of them is very interesting. Uh, the Egyptians were trying to do this. You know, they were grounding up things and putting them, you know, on, on pustules and trying to affect people. So far, the data, uh, it doesn't show them to be very effective. And uh, the safety studies have never been done. Mm. Do you think vaccines cause things like autism? Or- I've seen <clears throat> my patients. I've had hundreds and hundreds of patients come in and tell me we watched our child 
be devastated right in front of us from a vaccine. And I believe every single one of those parents. Wow. Okay. If the government comes out with a coronavirus vaccine, are you going to take it? What if they force you to take it? I will leave the country first. Really? Yeah. Wow. One less beautiful person in America. Yeah. yeah. I live in the South for a reason. <laughs> Why? You got guns? What? The militia here isn't going to let it happen. Really? That's fascinating. Okay. So um, I'm, a, I'm a Northern liberal that moved to the South and it's actually one of the safest places, you know, it's an odd thing, but they are not going to let you, uh, you know, and it, it, this could lead to our, the next kind of little civil war. Mm. Do you think this was all a ploy to, for government control to control the people? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I do, you know, I don't know at all anybody who says they know unless they're in the government they're trying to be a whistleblower would know but I, it is concerning to me to see something that really the number i mean the numbers of people dying from heart disease every year the number of people dying from cancer are, are so far outreach what we're seeing right now why has the economy never shut down to help people get the cake and donuts out of their mouth why don't we shut down <laughs> Why, no, I'm serious. Why is Baskin Robbins, Brewster's, Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, why are they allowed to be in business? Because they're killing a whole lot more people every day. And yet that's all fine, right? Now we have some virus that we're going to eventually all establish herd immunity to, and we could just shut everything down. Mm. It just, it does seem odd to me how quickly freedoms are taken away and people are being beaten in the streets. Often people are paying fines for rollerblading with their children in a park. Mm -hmm. I do question the thinking of closing down public nature spaces. Uh, that does concern me. Mm. It is kind of, it's kind of weird. The civil liberties that we've given up and it all, it, for me, I started becoming aware about civil liberty stuff, which is, you know, I'm an Asian immigrant. I, I love America and I love the freedom it affords. But I remember um, when they, after 9-11, we gave away our civil liberties when we started having to go to these security checkpoints mm -hmm. and taking off our shoes and letting them to go through our bags and all sorts of stuff. Even worse with them listening to everything. The NSA can listen to anything, anytime. I mean, this is just, it's even worse than that. And we are like, mm -hmm. please, please take away my rights. Keep me safe. They'll use fear mm -hmm. of your safety to take away anything. Mm -hmm. So now they're saying people can't congregate in groups of 10. That's a... Really? Yeah, wow, this is what's yeah. What do you think? I mean, that's this is how you <laughs> shut down any movement. You don't like how that you know, you don't think they're gonna it's it it is deeply concerning to me what I see going on and how um disempowered people are made to feel. Mm -hmm. They're made to feel weak and and like must live in terror and I must wait until they do something to come down and bestow upon me their grace and saving and rescuing me. Not ever being told that you have the power within you to fight and heal anything. There is not a pathogen on this earth that a human system cannot defeat. If that was the case, every other damn plague on earth would have wiped us out and none have. We are bad mofos and the reality <laughs> is that nobody wants to remember that i don't know when when this this adaptation into like some badge of honor of being a weak ass was a good idea so where i come from being weak is not a sign of honor we're yeah. like what you know bring it you know so yeah. it, it, and it it we're losing resilience. We're losing physical resilience, emotional resilience, psychological resilience. You know, you you get resilience and courage from getting your ass kicked, basically, and then recovering. From having a stressor and then exercise is a stressor. It breaks you down and then you make yourself stronger. And then you do it again and again and again, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? That's what yeah. happens. That's how you build resilience. If you avoid all stress in life, then you just end up weak and scared. Let's take so, some patient questions real quick. And okay. I want to know, can she treat a COVID patient? I want to change it a little bit. What What would you do if if a COVID positive patient came and saw you? So I have been taking care of them. We go intravenous, we go IV, vitamin C, my, I do Myers cocktails, high dose vitamin C. Um, I also like ozone, uh, 
MAH UBI, so we take the blood out. And so I refer to my friends who do this and, and I'm more just coping and, and modeling. So intravenous C, um, I add a Myers cocktail in there. We'll give them some oral zinc. Um, mm -hmm. We obviously want them to go uh, low carb really quickly, protein and fats to build the immune system. You need a lot of protein to build white blood cells you, you, in antibodies. You need tissue regeneration capabilities. Um, I like ozone. I like oxygen. I like nebulizing uh, hydrogen peroxide. I have all these things in my house. This is what I do. I do. I have ozone in my own home. I have hydrogen peroxide nebulizing. This is what I do to myself. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, but patient wise, we would be on that like big time. I would give them some D, some A. Um, At yeah, what point would you refer them to the hospital or the ER? Oh, that would be, you know, they would have to be struggling. I, I tell them to kind of hold their breath. If they can be holding their breath comfortably, you know, 20, 30 seconds still, we're okay. I think the hospital yeah, are really can't do that at all. Hospitals are a really tough place to go right now. I wouldn't want them. So let's say they don't have something. I don't like it's, I don't want them quarantined away from their family. And you know, the infectious disease rates in a hospital are outrageous. I don't need them picking up something else. I really would prefer them not to go there. And we're the vectors, our stethoscopes. Yeah, are it's, it's, dirty it's hands. Not, you know, so like my mom is 74 years old. She lives in a multi unit, she lives in a multi unit apartment building uh, with people who are like 55 and older. I said right away, six weeks ago or whatever it was, mommy, I'm gonna need you to get your stuff and then pack it in a bag. Never. I said either you come to my house or you go to Kim's house, you decide, you know, but because well, of that, invite. I didn't get an invite. What's up with that? Doc? So <laughs> she's been at my sister's right for five weeks now. And she hasn't been, I said, you pack what I don't care how long, because she's 74. She is a type two diabetic. She's pretty, we're getting her better. Numbers are better, but I didn't want her in that high potential yeah. viral load where yep. she's in a smaller apartment and I said, you're going to go crazy there. Come, you know, and she's on the fifth yep. floor. What if it did get quarantined? What if it got blocked off? So if I, I took precautions, right? Certain people you want to be prepared. Um, but in general, I, I shipped her a shit ton of supplements and I gave her uh, near infrared a and UV, a UVB light bulbs and we're artificially putting her under sunlight basically. Cause there isn't any up in Detroit. Yeah. So I'm basically giving her, helping our body make her own D3 and all its metabolites. Yep. So that's what I do. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of that. And my friends who are doing, they're doing 25,000 milligrams of C in like a one wow. dot IV uh, 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 and they're knocking it out. Wow. Yeah. Which, that's a good, actually a good segue to the next question. Patricia Lilly wants to know what supplements should we take for good health? Like everyday supplements. So if you want to maintain your health, what would you recommend? <clears throat> um, I think the less supplements, the better. So let me say that. So again, if you if you have a strong system and you follow these things that are building a strong reader, you don't need to take supplements every day for good health. I think you should be taking the sun. That is a supplement. Okay. Um, so I don't. I, I, I'm nervous to give a blanket thing for Corona. I think a little bit have a lot of C around, have some D around. Um, I'm taking melatonin actually, and I'm taking nitric oxide. So for this specifically, I added. A little bit higher dose melatonin because there's a mechanism in there that helps with that with the immune system modulation nitric oxide mm -hmm. i add um you know iodine is a good one a little bit of zinc Quick. but yeah i don't like to do a blanket thing to people they might not need it anna louisa wants to know if she has a bad gallbladder that needs to come out what can she do um to help her gallbladder that's it. All letters are you, I mean, I don't know the situation, obviously. I mean, I had, I passed like 3000 stones myself once. So, um, and I kept my, yeah, I went to the ER and they said, you have this. And I said, yeah, I'm not doing that today. Get me the hell out of here. and I'll do it myself. That was a while ago. Right. So I have my gallbladder. It's a liver problem. It's really getting backed up from a liver issue. Um, I would say wherever she is, I, typically Chinese medical doctors are pretty good at that. Yeah. I would get an analysis from them and see what they pick up and see what they suggest mm -hmm. um, and see how critical something is. Obviously, we don't want anything to get to an acute situation, uh, but you can do a lot. If you find a Chinese medical doctor to kind of help navigate that, clean that liver, see what caused it from the get go. Um, and personally, so Hilda Clark has some good liver flush stuff, but coffee enemas for a gallbladder issue. Wow. 
Mallory wants to know if you wear a uh, mask when you go out in public. Absolutely not. Couldn't see this pretty face. Yeah. You know, I don't either because this is too cute. But um, starting Monday, Houston has mandated that everybody out in public has to wear one. Yes, so that's a problem. So what they just mandated is for you to lower your immune system for an appearance of protecting people. Yeah. Have I put on my N95 mask when I've been with some nurses and some other situations in medical places to make them feel safe when I was getting my own IVs and this and that? People, I'm like, sure. We all did it just to be like, fine. But uh, I see people running out in the air on the street with masks on. I'm going, what? you're just lowering your carbon. You're, you're inhaling toxic carbon dioxide waste products. Your breath is waste. It's toxic poison your body's trying to expel. You're lowering your oxygen. You just, you've just destroyed your immune system and activating potential latent viruses in yourself. That it's the toughest funny. thing I've ever heard of. Helen wants, Helen wants to know, know about what recommendations do you have for lupus patients? Oh, uh, lupus. Is, I have a lot of lupus patients. Lupus is complicated. Um, you Lupus is a major light dysregulation problem. Um, so it depends on what kind of stage they are, but we do work them gradually into getting back into some sunlight to, to solve some of that. Um, mm -hmm. I like a lot of cannabis actually for symptom relief for them. Um, mm -hmm. that's lupus is complicated. And by, I, by cannabis, do you mean CBD? Cause some, there was another question about CBD. Both. It depends on where you are and what's legal for you. So oh. some conditions I'm a very much more of a THC, you know, Parkinson's and different conditions need THC. I mean, you're not going to get the same effect out of hemp only. Paul wants to know if you're supplementing with, with vitamin D3, how much should he take? Well, you know, ideally, you know, a blood test on this. I mean, this is what you want to see the level is. My mom's D3 is uh, 68 right now because I had a blood test. I know where she was. So I have her taken like, because I'm a little nervous, I said, well, let's just make sure she's good. 5,000. She really doesn't even probably need it, but I don't care if her number gets a little bit higher. So my nephew's though was like 33. He's autistic, different. I got him taking 10,000 a day and that's probably mm -hmm. not even enough to be honest. So mm -hmm. it depends. People are very safe at two, 3,000 a day, but I much prefer you make it from the sun. If I go out in the sun in the middle of the day in 20 minutes, I'm going to make 20, 30,000 IU. You understand? Mm -hmm. And in a pill, you only get that signal in the, from the sun. I get a thousand other metabolites are being made. You don't get that in a pill. So, yeah, I, I'm going to guess you already, I can already guess your answer about uh, oh. a multivitamin a day. Well, it has its time and place. I have some multivitamins that I recommend to, you know, I have kids with ADHD, let's say, or other neurological mm -hmm. issues. I, I can't often get them to take seven different things based on what we're dealing with. So there are some good multis for certain situations, certain people, right? But I'm in a very, I'm in a certain niche, mental health, you know, how I talk to a, treat a bipolar or a schizophrenic or autism, they're very customized. You really aren't gonna find multis that work, but yes, some multis are, are good and it's a nice basis if you have a crappy diet to try and get some stuff, but chances are most of you guys have really wrecked guts. You're not absorbing it anyway. That's so right. that's why I'm like, and supplements are, 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 you know, high in deuterium and there's an issue with all this stuff. You got to really, you know, Nancy um, wants to know what's your take on fibromyalgia? Oh, Nancy, it's such a big, take. this is a big one. I have a lot of patients with this. Um, I, I've been diagnosed with it myself a few times. I don't have it anymore. So let me say that first of all, you can reverse anything. Oh. Uh, there's always an emotional component. So there's a term called psychoneuroimmunology. I did a whole continuing ed lecture to doctors this last January. It's kind of a thing I specialize in a little bit in the holistic field. Emotions are a root cause of what's going on with that. And there's almost always a memory or some locked in traumas around shame. And that needs to be addressed. It isn't about supplementing it away. You now you're sounding like Brene Brown. Yeah, you have to address it. Now you sound like Brene Brown. Yeah, but it's a magnesium deficiency. Know that go for some magnesium right away um, and use some, uh, you need a functional person that knows what the hell they're doing with fibro. Let me say that, but magnesium I injection agree. might be a miracle. It was a miracle for me. I agree with that. Um, yeah. Trisha wants to know, how can we fix our gut? <laughs> One of my favorite things, right? It's so funny sitting right here. So there's a lots of different ways. One of the most powerful ways is a peptide called BPC-157. 
Mm. So you can look that up, BPC-157. Uh, it's a peptide. It's The FDA has not stolen it yet. See, the reason they want to get rid of peptides because you can't patent them and sell them like a drug. That's right. Right? So that's a really, really powerful, effective um, thing. One, you want to stop poisoning it. You know, if you're drinking bleach, you should stop doing that. And by bleach, uh, there's a lot of chemicals that we know are doing that. Like gluten just does it. It destroys you. So Ion uh, by Biome is another product that basically creates a firewall barrier, barrier heals your gut, and BPC-157. Cannabis is also really good. CBD oil is really good. Um, guts are actually easier to heal than people think. Mm. But... You have to usually stop taking in a poison that's ripping holes through your gut, and right. then you got to feel it at the same time. This is uh, going to be the last viewer question, and okay. then I want to cover a couple more topics. You've been so generous with your time, but this is a long-time follower of mine, Trudy. She uh -huh. wants to know, you work with Navy SEALs and military. How are you helping our military veterans with PTSD? So mostly the primary mechanism we've always done is neurofeedback. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also talking there's a few supplements that I'm a you know huge fan of that I think are really amazing for helping with the HPA axis, the stress management, the adrenal, the reaction. So mm -hmm. if you can find things that can help turn that drive down. But in practice that's what I always did. I always we never could get um like the VA hospital to get on board with anything we did. Like they don't but actually, my one of my students just sent me a picture of one of the brain light therapies we use that the VA had that website. My mind was blown. Um, so my way of always doing that was I always had one gratis case, you know, mm -hmm. in a cycle. That's what I could afford to do in my practice personally. Um, but there's I'm not a free, free case. Yeah, I mean that's what yeah one free case that I could do, but just and to keep my business afloat, you know. Um, yeah. But I have no in with like the government and all that. And whenever people would come try, I'm like, well, if you can get me in there with them, I'd love to go in there. I would love to be in the prison system. I don't, I don't, you know, to get into that system, it, it's a lot of paperwork and I'm not a bureaucrat and I'm a clinician. That's what I do is I, you know, so, but education and teaching. And so by using chemistry, I do use chemistry with supplements and helping them with their psychiatrists and on their medications and navigating that journey. Cause I work very closely with uh, psychiatrists and physicians that are managing medications to help titrate people off while I'm restructuring their brain function and calming things down and working with their therapist. So I work really, really tightly with those groups and we go in and try to heal the trauma out. And neurofeedback mm -hmm. is outstanding for PTSD management. It should be the way every veteran is treated from the VA and yet they don't do it. And where could they get neurofeedback? They can go to a couple of websites and look for a certified person. You can go to BCIA.org. Mm. You're looking for a BCN, like I'm a BCN, board certified neurofeedback. So BCIA.org or ISNR.org, International Society for Neurofeedback Research. You're okay. going to find practitioners that are in there. And then you just have to see in your state, the websites are good about that. And then what we specialize in. So some people are just alcoholism. Some people are just trauma. Some people are just autism. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's cool. So, um, yeah, I said that was the last question, but you've had a lot of compliments on your skin. I don't know if you could see the comments, but everyone's oh, loving. I agree. Yeah, they're loving your skin, so they want to know what are your skin secrets. And Aniana wants to know about eczema. You know, I, I think Spirit is trying to make me do something with skin because <laughs> I don't know anything about skin. This is not my forte. I, I get asked questions like. I go, you guys, I have no idea. They'll send me, patients send me pictures. I'm on Zoom. They're like, hey, doc. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm not a dermatologist. <laughs> it is certainly an area of, 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 I would, the least education I have is skin. Okay. So eczema, I don't, it's skin issues. It's the largest organ. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, so, I know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I will actually correct you. I don't think it's the largest organ. I think the largest organ is skeletal muscle. Ah. Uh, okay. Think about it. We can talk about it another time. Okay. Skeletal well, muscle. Skin, 
But so no, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know. I use a product, I'll tell you, I use, it's called Renew 28. It's a mitochondrial Ooh. redox signal. It makes my skin be like, it re regenerates every 28 days. Other than that, I don't do any, I eat a lot of meat and I'm out in the sun. That's what I do. Uh, but, they tell, but medicine tells you to stay out of the sun. I know, isn't that brilliant? <laughs> it's a great, if I was gonna be- You have a hole in the ozone, doctor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't believe that. No, so, that's a big problem. There's a big problem over Australia. Australia yeah. screwed. Yeah, they're they're getting screwed. So a couple of quick, another couple of quick rapid fires, and then I'll let you go. Okay. ADHD is it real or did we man make that with food and environment and ADHD? Um, well, it's kind of. I mean, there's a real neurological issue uh, and there's many subtypes of it a good 12 to 13 so that you know the brains are there's definitely stuff going on so it's not just manufactured and made up to sell drugs okay i think the drug solution is stupid um do have we created this pathology through most yes you can absolutely create it from lifestyle Mm -hmm. You take a kid in front of a TV all day and give them sugar all the time since they're developing since that they're what what you practice grows. Whatever you do over and over and over again, your brain neurologically hardwires itself to that behavior. So TVs and video games, things like that are rapid, 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 rapid. That's what the brain expects, a dopamine hit all the time. That's not like Little House on the Prairie, where it took you like three weeks to make something that you could play with. Right. Yeah. Those brains couldn't develop and hardwire that way. We're hardwiring our children in such a way. We're also forcing them to read and write well before they're neurologically capable, creating more learning disorders. And we are poisoning their air, water, and food. They're just set up to be screwed. So along the same lines, autism, if a parent, if there's a parent watching who has an autistic child, yeah. and I know it's a spectrum, so, but generally speaking, what is something they could really do right now to help their autistic child? Um, we start with the gut. I would say get, get a book called Gut and Psychology Syndrome by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. Ooh, that's a good one. I would say start there. You know what I mean? I, I think if they don't know anything, that's a good place to start. Get that, get that settled. Um, and then I, I say find neurofeedback. It's very profound. I think, and I think you start looking and understanding this is a big picture it's it's time it's patient mama you are on a marathon this will not be a sprint and whatever you can do to find gratitude and the blessing of this in your life and what is your child here to teach you because they are your ultimate buddha moment and, and if you can embrace that that this is a gift somehow to you know then we can let go of your own bullshit that's going to get in the way of you helping them mm. so it's a it's a lesson it, well, I just, I, I see that the parents who say, okay, this is what it is. Let's, what, what can I see that's right here? And what can I do? You know, they're in a very different position than the parents who are crying because they're fighting and resisting and they're angry, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, that's all. It's just, it's what, it's trying to get yourself in a receptive mode so you can be clear and you can move forward mm -hmm. or you can fight it. You know what I mean? Now, are you, um, for the last minute or so, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I've, I've gone way over time, but this hour has flown by. I mean, I don't know. I'm enjoying. We're both so charming. I'm, I'm, I don't we're know about both, you. I'm so pretty. <laughs> <You're> so pretty. <laughs> don't hate me because I'm so pretty. Mm. So, what, you're working on a project or something? Tell us what you're working on. We're on a few things. So um, I'm really excited. I'm going to, so you've written all these books and you said to me that if you've written a book, I'm like, no, I haven't written a book. I'm just busy taking care of patients. I'm like, I don't know how you guys do this. And because you have a wife, I need a, I need like three wives so I can get more shit done. But I'm going to be in a book. Um, I think called, we're going to get shut down. You froze. Oh, okay. I don't know. Froze again. <laughs> So I'm, I'm in a new book project with a compilation of some docs. I'm not going to drop any names, but some good stuff. We crashed all the internet. I, I did. I, am I back? What's happening? There you are. I'm back again. So yeah, the book is the FDA. That's what happened. I know it's because they're uh, listening. That's yeah. the NSA. 
Um, to start over, tell me again about the, the... Well, the book is coming. So I'm in a compilation book. It's all about longevity. And we're basically, it's going to be great. It's about 30 different doctors. We're all writing a chapter, but it's going to flow together. It's going to actually have a workbook that's going to go. So basically it's, it's like every one of our top protocols and it's all, we all have, have our thing about longevity. So we're all... Wow. Um, epigenetic coaches, we all look at genetics and, and, and fine tune our patients and how we can change the environment for you to optimize you. It's all for us about taking you to the next level, not yeah. managing crisis and disease. So that book is coming out in a workshop and a summit, probably September. Um, I do a lot right now with my e-learning center. So I'm kind of focusing on women. I was trying to do a men's group too, but I love you guys. I just couldn't make, I couldn't do <laughs> all of it. Too yeah. many balls. Huh? Okay. <laughs> But so I do uh, e-learning centers right now, um, a couple courses for women. I have my foundational course called the three R and it means rest, restore, renew. So I take women through 90 days uh, in a Facebook community and an online e-learning center where I'm just trying to create a new foundation of information and health for you. So you can start maybe asking some of these better questions. I talk about some of these things. I talk about how you've been basically lied to and manipulated and maybe the bullshit story you've been told is why you're sick and it's not because you're deranged. It's not because you're stupid. It's because you've been lied to. And so if I give you some of this stuff and say, look, I'm just gonna present it to you, you decide. Okay, mm -hmm. you from a different perspective, things you are not being told. Um, and how do they find it? That's brainandbodyrevolution.org. Mm. Let me type that so down. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, my practice is a different site, and I'm I'm behind on getting them merged. So right now, they don't even like talk. They, people don't even know they both exist. But my practice in Atlanta is that uh, I'm not currently right now in this time taking any new patients. So most of it's through the e-learning center. Um, yeah, so we do that, and then I have a second level course, and I also do retreats. So my first retreat, I launched my first retreat, Doc, and it was at, it's an African safari in July, in South Africa. I don't know what's going to happen, Oh my! Uh, but the plan is, you know, we are going to open up again. We will travel again. We will get to taste the world and experience these things. So um, that's what's going on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, you also do retreats. Yeah. So that's that again, the one was going to, the first one is in July in uh, South Africa. It's supposed to be, we have to wait and see what's going on, okay, but cool. I think we're going to be good to go. Um, this all happened, right? We launched it right when this happened. So I'm only about 40% full on that because everybody was like, Oh, Corona. I'm like, it's going to be okay. You know, Not a Corona. Yeah. Yeah. Not and I do the donut. We got, we got a series going. So yeah, it's, it's right now, and I'm focusing on women for those courses and retreats. Hmm, that's really cool. So, brainandbodyrevolution.org and and a Facebook web page too. You said yeah. I'm um, I'm on Instagram. You know, with the at Dr. Mm -hmm. underscore Rimka, and then Facebook is Dr. It's like slash Dr. Rimka, I think, but it's Dr. Rimka's Brain and Body Solutions. So, Brain and Body Solutions has been my practice, and then Brain and Body Revolution is the e-learning center. Look at you. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Rimka, you've been a joy and a pleasure to have on. I just want to take this moment to honor you. Everything you've worked on, you've really specialized on this for 25 years. You really helped thousands of patients from regular normal people to autistic kids to our military. And uh, you are deserving of every success um, that's coming your way. And I know my tribe, the people watching are going to give you a lot of love. You've had a, a thousand people watch you on this broadcast. Is there any last words you'd like to say? Yeah, you know, first of all, so thank you for having me. Thank you for doing this. And obviously you're putting out so much content, putting so much energy into the world and educating and entertaining because entertaining is important. It has great value. And you and I are both are really good at entertaining, you know, as we while we teach. Um, so thank you. And all of you who are watching, you know, thank you for doing that because you're clearly taking out time to learn and grow and be curious. And I guess the message I want everybody, I always want to tell people is I, whatever you need to do, be quiet so you can go inside some kind of way to remember how strong and powerful you really are. That's what I want to try and encourage. I, I'm a huge mindset visualization, you know, proponent because as the brain goes, the rest of the body goes. And I, I just, you know, fear and shame are going to destroy your immune system faster than anything out there. 
And it's really important to protect and guard every source of poison that's coming into you. And that means food in your mouth, things on your skin, alcohol, drugs, things you choose to watch on TV okay. and people you choose to have in your life, as well as the thoughts that you're generating any auto toxic thoughts. You got to nip that shit in the bud and retrain yourself to have different ways of thinking and being. I'm just, it's really important. So that's what I want to say. You, you are very powerful in your thoughts and in your breath, and you, you have deep control over who you are, your neurology, and most of it's actually free. You don't need to wait for them to sell you something. That's what I got. Got it. And you froze. Round of applause for Dr. Remco, man. <laughs> You're giving up for this lady. Thank you so much. And uh, they're already asking for you to come back. So we'll probably try to schedule for you to come back again. If you're up for it. Awesome. Yeah. Just give All me a right. bite. Hey man, we're just, you made me put on pants. So <laughs> yeah, I'll put on pants again for you because <laughs> I adore you. Okay. Adore you. All right. We'll see you next right. time. Bye.